Hey everyone, it's Luthien, and along with Emrys, we are Girls with Sabres. This is our first video in a series where we will be exploring the Byronic hero in various media. In this episode, we analyze the anime series Code Geass, Lelouch of the Rebellion. Of course, every Byronic hero needs a goddess for guidance and healing. Not only is Lelouch similar to Kylo Ren, his relationship with Goddess C2 strikes an uncanny parallel with Raylo. And if you haven't already noticed, we talk a lot about Raylo on this channel. In all seriousness, though, this anime and this podcast is not intended for children due to its mature content. So earmuffs and parental blocks for the kiddos. Also, spoiler alert, if you have any inclination to watch Code Gas, we go a little deep and divulge major plot points. So spoiler alert, spoiler alert. <laughs> please, please, please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. We appreciate that love so much and every like, every subscribe, every comment, they seriously help this channel grow. May the force be with all of you and peace, love, and Raylo. Always enjoy. So friend, I just started watching a anime called Code Geass. Luke from 100% Star Wars recommended it to me. So Luke, you are responsible for this this podcast. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, sir. Cheers. <laughs> but seriously, I was talking about it with some of our uh, Raylos on Twitter. And I was like, basically, Code Geass should be called the Byronic Hero and this collective subconscious. And not only is he the Byronic Hero, he is also, he and his girl, C2, are like Raylo. Raylo, 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 all over the place. So Code Gas is set in an alternate universe where during the French Revolution, the nobles of all of Europe fled to the American colonies, which never became independent, and they ruled there from that time on. The resulting country, Britannia, is the world's foremost superpower by the time of Code Gas. Unlike America as we know it, Britannia's code is all men are not created equal. Rather, the strongest, be that by physical strength or through nepotism, will rise to the top. With this philosophy in mind, Britannia conquered Japan with its army and turned the country into a land where the invaders live in splendor and the Japanese, now known as Elevens, live in ghettos. So basically, uh, the emperor is named Charles V. Britannia, and he had 107 consorts and had children from most of these consorts basically rule the the throne as viceroys through all of these these um, countries because Britain at this point in time or Britannia owns um, almost over half of the globe. So one of the sons is named Lelouch and Lelouch is our main character. He is um, basically the anti-hero, the Byronic hero of this. Um, his mother was murdered. Nunley, his sister, was petrified because she actually witnessed the murder and became uh, psychosomatic, blind, and paralegic and live in a, a wheelchair. And with this world being the way that it is, where all men are not born equal, a little girl who has these disabilities is considered inferior. So Lelouch goes and talks to her, his father. His father humiliates him and banishes he and his sister to Japan. So they live in fear because they're afraid that the same assassins that killed their mother will kill them as well. So because of this, because of the hate that he has for his father and for the hate that he, of uh, Britann Britannia's and Britannia's philosophy, he like swears that he will end Britannia and end the world the way it is and build it up to be a better place that will accept people like Natalie um, and not condemn her for being quote unquote weaker than the rest of us. 
sounds like he wants to be a supreme leader. Betrayed. Betrayed. um, Not listened to. The start is Luch really does have a genuine need and desire to make this world a better place because of everyone he loves his sister the most. But unfortunately, on his way to that, power and control and anger and bitterness grabs a hold of him. And so he, um, every step that he does, it becomes easier and easier to commit atrocities. And those atrocities build up to be bigger and better than the next. He is ruthless when it comes to destroying and dis- demolishing people or things that get in his way for his plan. And he basically becomes everything that he sought to destroy. It sounds like Kylo Ren 2.0, like going, you know, a few pegs above what, what Kylo did. I mean, we know Kylo ordered the, you know, massacre of the the villagers on Jakku, but it was Hoxon and Snoke who, who killed you know, everyone in the Hosnian system, but, but still, um, the parallels can be made. It seem it, it sounds like Lelouch is way more ruthless, uh, than Kylo Ren ever was. Yeah. I mean, there are during these times where he gets his, his favorite pastime activity is the chess game. Mm -hmm. So chess is a huge allegory in Code Geass and, and Lelouch is like a master chess player. Like, but he's starting to see these people in these lands as a big chess board. He sounds so, like a complete rational. <laughs> he is. He's an INTJ mastermind, which, yeah. you know, is like most ra- ma- rational masterminds are Byronic heroes. Mm-hmm. But it becomes such a chess board game that he starts laughing at this death, at, like manically laughing because he no longer recognizes them as people and places and living beings. He now sees them as pawns. Sky is 17. How could a 17 year old be able to conquer the world like Lelouch did? Well, he rescued this girl named C2. Um, that is her name. She has a real name, but no one ever knows it except Lelouch. And it stays, it stays that way. Even at the end of the series, Lelouch is the only one who knows her real name. Not even the audience knows. Yeah, but mm-hmm. it's kind of like a Doctor Who thing where mm. um, the doc, the doc- doctor, that's the character's name, is the doctor. That's how we know mm-hmm. him as. That's how all the characters know him as. That's how he introduces now, himself. Now her. <laughs> um, or now her. Yes, mm-hmm. thank you for that correction. Mm-hmm. Um, but only his wife can know his his name only river song Mm -hmm. knows his real name because in the time lord tradition that was like a statement of the most intimacy is someone who knows your name lelouch found out his her name in a very um interesting way but first let's talk about what she did and why she is in his life basically he rescues her um, from like a government testing pod that she was in in a, in a van. She gives him this power called Gios. And Gios manifests itself in whatever wish the person who accepts this power. So Lelouch's desire or grand wish is to command anyone or anything to do anything that he pleases, but he can only command a person using his Gios one time and he has to have direct eye contact. So C2 grants him this superpower, but in exchange for a favor that she'll turn in. So he accepts, uh, he now has the superpower to command anyone with complete mind control and they do whatever he wants them to do and it's very much like the ring and lord of the rings the more you use your gios the more the gios takes over you yeah um the more the gios corrupts you so you think it's this wish fulfillment but it erodes your entire being and you become Mm. less and less human and that's c2 
that's how we see her. She's, um, she's real aloof. She's stone cold. You, she's kind of, um, otherworldly because I was she gonna say she's very goddess like yeah she's very goddess like she's all in white mm-hmm. um where uh Lelouch is in black um so she is this person who watches over his shoulder shoulder that grants them grants them powers but at the same time she is on a quest herself and she is trying to find a champion who will grant her the favor in order to for Lelouch to save the world, he basically realizes that he's going to have to have an alter ego, kind of like Batman. So he dons a mask and a black cape, like all you know superheroes do, and calls all, himself Zero. And calls himself Zero. Mm-hmm. And so no one knows that uh, Lelouch is Zero except C two, and a, a couple of other people know. And now we're going to talk about the Raylo, the Raylo intimacy. And it was like the scene that I was like, oh my gosh, holy smokes. This is so Raylo, I'm dying. (laughs) (laughs) So in season one, episode 11, you see a confrontation with um, this nightmare. Basically, the way that Britannia conquered the world is they had these huge transformer looking things like basically they're transformers or the robots you see in pacific rim and the knights are able to uh like fly and fight with these transformers lucia's best friend um suzaku flies this light mirror called the lancelot but his best friend is on the opposing side He is a knight for Britannia, and so C2 is trying to intercede, and so she touches Suzaku's nightmare and messes with Suzaku's um, head, so Suzaku can see his worst memory, his worst nightmare. When that is happening, uh, Lelouch is, is kind of interested in what's going on, and he touches C2, and all of a sudden, it He's turns eating. into a freaking force vision, y'all. <laughs> well, go for it, friend. <laughs> Tell him what well, you saw. <laughs> he, Lelouch touches C2, and it's this flash of now he's inside C2's memories. He's seen where she's come from. Um, he's seen pretty much her, her innermost demons, her fears, her heartaches, and it's a, a quasi interrogation scene where yeah. where yeah Kylo is interrogating Ray and 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 goes into her mind and it is seen you know I see the island and blah 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 and you're afraid to leave the the you know Jakku blah 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 so that's what it kind of is like for Lelouch going into C2's mind but when I wa- when I watch that I'm just like I wrote in my notes all in caps freaking force vision mm. Lelouch sees and feels like this girl has been through some things so um she is uh impelled and they escape to a cavern and she is able to heal herself and she doesn't die which kind of makes him think okay this girl's not human (laughs) yeah something's different about this one (laughs) so uh she utters her name in her sleep and you hear these little uh, water drops, which I think are metaphors of teardrops. So instead of the audience hearing her name, hear they the, hear the some drop of water, yeah. or water, which is like mm-hmm. tears. She starts crying because that's mm-hmm. the first time she hears someone say her name in centuries. It's very much a flipped script of Ben hearing his name uttered by Ray. For Forget Han or even his mother you know his mother and father saying his name when Rey says it in The Last Jedi she's refusing it from the time she spoke to Luke and and the hut scene you know she refuses to call him Kylo Ren anymore she's calling him Ben and Ben Solo you know that shakes him to the core the same thing happens when Lelouch says C2's real name and it it just shakes her very being when she when she hears it and she's so overcome with with emotion. But then of course he turns, 
you know, Supreme Leader Lelouch, Emperor Lelouch, whatever, back on. And it, and the second time he says it, it's just very cold and, and not like the first time at all. C2 has lived for centuries. I mean, she... Mm-hmm. It's like to the point where she cannot feel anymore. She doesn't yeah. have any feelings. And so the fact that she cried in front of him was a huge breakthrough for her. Huge breakthrough. Yeah. Um, he, She's unmasking him. He's unmasking her like, hello, last Jedi. So another thing happens in, uh, in season one. Episode 25. C2's uh, visions and uh, Lelouch says something pretty important to her. Oh my gosh. Holy Raylo Batman. <laughs> so basically <laughs> they're going, they're going to this temple and on this Island temple has a, like a connection to the Gios and the way that this temple kind of protects itself is it does what a C2 does, where it can get into a person's psychological uh, subconscious and messes with them. Both of them, both Lelouch and a C2, are taken down into oh, the subconscious. Right. Yes. And it becomes really black and white, really like trippy, mm-hmm. um, where you can see some memories. And all of a sudden, um, C2 and Lelouch are nude in front of each other, kind of like an Adam and Eve mm-hmm. <laughs> sort of thing. Well, stripped and- to their. their- their biggest vulnerabilities and yeah. she goes on to say how lonely she is and you know this that and the other thing and Lelouch turns to her and almost it's not as t- it's not you know whisper tender like Ben said to Ray but he goes you're not alone and I went hello <laughs> Hello, Raylo. So yeah. again, she starts crying because he shocks her and she realizes, oh, this person actually sees me as, as a human being. Like she remembers that she's a human because she actually is. She's just immortal. And then almost 50 seconds later, they end up leaving. They're flying back to wherever. And she's going on this little diatribe about how he needs to prevail over his past and this and that. And she turns around and she kisses him. And she pretty much like, tells him become who you were born to be smooch. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, hello, Raylo. Hello, Raylo. Oh my goodness. Oh my I goodness. wanted to take your hand. Ben's hand. Ugh. <laughs> Which uh, there should have been a kiss there. Just saying. yes. So yeah, we're we're summarizing about uh, forty plus some episodes. So we're skipping a lot here, but I hope you guys don't mind. So after that happens, a lot of stuff happens between the Lush. Lush becomes darker and darker and deeper. He goes ahead and decides it's time to confront his father, the Emperor Charles. And Lush discovers that his father is uh, one of the heads behind this whole Gios thing. Um, it's very complicated, so I won't go into discussion because I'll just lose you guys. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, we find out that C2 is um, like she's kind of like the queen of all of our subconscious thinking. Um, She lives in that that world of individual thoughts. Lelouch's dad's plan was to make the world all one, Mm -hmm. Um, that there should not be any individuality, that that is the reason that the world is horrible and that people lie to each other. We just get rid of that and we make people all, all into one living being. And so uh, Lelouch hears this. He goes, oh, my goodness, my parents are mad. And so C2, C2 turns to Lelouch and say, okay, I'm turning in my favor. And my favor, my wish is to die. So I want you to kill me because you have now reached 
uh, your level of gigas where you can kill me. And take but it's my not place. her true wish. Like, this is the part of C2 that's just very... Robotic. Uh, robotic, yeah, me- yeah. I was going to say mechanical. Um, just like Le- Lelouch had those kind of two sides of him. This is This is C2's part of her where she turns it all off turns off her emotion so it's not her true wish you see the scene like she is literally standing behind a wall and a floor of like these abstract clock you know clock gears turning with all these masks so she's like in the flow of time she's robotic it was very mortis-esque it's very mortis in fact Um, the plan that they're trying to do to get rid of the subconscious is called Ragnarok or the short, the sword of Akasha and the sword of Akasha. I looked up the, uh, origin of it because it's mythological. If you're a Campbell fan or Jungian fan, you'll love Code Geass. Akasha is Sanskrit. And the word literally translates as ether or space as in the space between or the space time, meaning world between worlds. If Lelouch kills C2, then he will finally be his father's equal and he'll be able to kill him. So because Lelouch was too kind hearted and wouldn't kill C2, he goes down this thought elevator and somehow they don't really explain it, but he ends up in C2's memory and he explores her past. Yeah, you see the the first thing you see is a really young C2. She is dirt poor, she's in rags. Looks like she's been chained. She's got like a broken uh, like cuff around her ankle. Um, Looks like she might have been abused. Then you see she's in a uh, in front of a nun in a in a church like setting. Um, And it's really the this nun who uh, gives her the gias. But it's a trick like the nun has used her basically but throughout throughout all of this you find out what c2's greatest wish was it was to be loved like just to be loved by someone hello ray yeah she was abandoned yeah. she didn't have any family she was you know sold into slavery just like ray was and mm-hmm. like her gios was i just want someone to love me yeah. But because it was Gios, because it was mind control, C2 became almost numb because she realized that right. no one really did love her. It was just the mind control, the ability that she had. So right. she almost became robotic where she couldn't feel anymore. She ends up telling us to the nun who ends up saying, you were just a pawn, you were a tool to be to be used. You know, C2 took that turn of being a nun where she tried to have someone develop a strong enough kiosk to kill her so she can trick them into becoming the immortal so she could die. Um, She was doing that for with a loot. The loot comes flying in with his nightmare, the little robot that can fly. And says, see, too, this is not what you want. You should not come to death looking like that. Because literally, Charles, her his father, is like bending her over backwards about to break her back. And it's like, he keeps on saying, but see, too, you're my, you're my, and he never finishes that thought. No. And I'm like, use your words, boy. Yeah. Use your words. You, you're 17 years old and you conquered the world. Now mm. use your words. Yeah. So he, he like calls after C2 and says, you know, you should not come to death struggling like that and hurting and yelling. You should come to death smiling. Let me be the one that, you know, gives you that smile. And um, she so, snaps out of it because yeah. she's kind of in this, this uh, trance um, because of Charles. Lelouch saying that to her, she snaps out of it. She snaps out of it and she starts falling. 
and mm. she she falls and the Lelouch uh, grabs her from falling into the ether and uh, um, catches her. To me, it, it, that so screams Raylo of the soulmate that can um, free you from from the chain of isolation and and feeling just so unloved because mm-hmm. they, they both were abandoned. Although one was a prince, right? <laughs> Hello, yeah, and one was a slave. They they both had the core need of being mm-hmm. loved. It. And they both saw that in their in their visions and their callbacks of their memories. They both saw it within each other that even though they were very came from very different backgrounds, they both experienced this heartbreak and betrayal and um, anger and frustration, um, and and both were using the gias to achieve what they thought were their true wishes. And it's really interesting, I think, because in the art after the credits, what the art that really stood out to me was C2 with these huge white angel wings yeah. holding Lelouch, who's crying into her, um, to her, ch- in, you know, her chest area, like right next to her heart. And it's it, to me, it just screamed Raylo again. Of course, the white angel. And the black, um, the black cloaked figure who just needs compassion from mm-hmm. the goddess. Mm-hmm. Definitely. You kind of know Ryan Johnson watched some Code Gas and was like, okay, all right. Yeah. I'm just going to throw some of that in there, gonna, too. Yeah, yeah. This is great it's, melting pot. <laughs> Code Gas, it covers Arthurian legends. Mm-hmm. It covers uh, Nordic mythology, um, the sub the collective subconscious and uh the Jungian persona persona is a huge theme in code geos let's watch a quick clip of when lelouch discusses the persona everyone uses lies on family on friends in society and everyone wears a different face but is that a sin What is one's true face? Even you wear a mask, that of an emperor. None of us can make a move now without our respective personas. So the persona is part of the Jungian psychological model. It's a mask that we use at different times. Um, We have like a mask with family and friends and our job, etc. And you either you have Lush like frankly saying that we wear lies all the time. We wear our mask and for friends and family. Like you literally see them flashing scenes of their family living room and then his school room where he meets for student council. You have the the mass that you see floating around on the gears. Like Lelouch sat in on Carl Jung as he was writing all his thoughts down and then like just regurgitated all of them to Charles. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. He's 17 years old. That was probably his lesson. Uh, you know, that week that he crammed into his brain for the test. And he's like, this is perfect. I can drop yeah. some knowledge down on my dad. <laughs> yeah. Come on, dad. You're just too stupid to get it. Haven't you ever heard <laughs> of <Carl> Young? <laughs> and that's basically how Lelouch talks. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to talk a little bit and go in back to the Ragnarok plan and the sort of akasha and talk about it in the context of persona so journey with us down that thought elevator dang we're the bell hops on this elevator ride down into the thought hole basically the emperor charles the king's a pact with his brother and all their siblings were super competitive and they were killing each other off right and left to inherit this throne So Victor and Charles made a pact that they would never lie to each other, but they did. And they realized that humanity could not be truthful. We just can't. So they decide to uh, kill this world of C2, 
um, the swirl of the subconscious and get rid of every single persona until we just meld into one unified person, one individual, and that's it. Uh, and, and that's one of the reasons why Charles was such an absentee father and because he was consumed by this Ragnarok plan. That's what he calls it is the Ragnarok. You see that little kind of brown, weird uh, thing that looks like a DNA helix? <laughs> that's the sort of Akasha. That is the that is the thing that is going to kill the subconscious, the individual, and allow all those gears and those masks to crumble. So Lelouch has a plan. He thought he was just going to uh, restore the world to freedom, but he realizes that he also needs to have protect the freedom of persona and the individual and destroy his father in the process. That's heavy. Yeah. It's not that, for kids. It's not oh for kids. God. It's certainly a cornucopia of symbolism. Well, you also have like this, the uh, allusions to Ragnarok. Ragnarok is the uh, Norse idea of the apocalypse of the world end. And that would be the end of the world is the end of individuality and free will. So there's just so much allusion to this collective subconscious, which is something that Campbell and Young talk about. I mean, that's where we get this idea of archetypes and tropes and uh, what the whole monomyth template. And when I say monomyth template, what I'm talking about is basically a shorthand label for what the, the thesis that Joseph Campbell came up. Not only would Charles destroy the individual, he would destroy stories and human cre- creativity itself as well. Wow. Wow. But I thought it was interesting because right now Lelouch has basically uh, three personas. He has zero as the rebellious leader. Okay. Then he has uh, Lelouch, the student and then Lelouch, the brother to Nunnally, which the brother to Nunnally is completely different than Lelouch, the, the student, or Lelouch Zero, the, the rebellion leader. But I think mm. Lelouch still has not, I still, I still think he is in the adolescent phase of still not knowing who he truly is, still not getting the fact that you have to separate your ego from your persona. I agree. I agree. Well, you, you find that in all, all really, he doesn't even come into his own until almost the very end of the series where it's finally all making sense to him. And then he really knows what he has to do. That's, that sounds familiar. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's also his persona of zero takes over everything. Right. Like, he forgets yep. he forgets that he's doing this to help Nunnally and create a gentler world. Yep. But here he is, a committer of mass genocide. He gets so focused on revenge that that mass, that zero, swallows him whole. Just like the mask of Kylo Ren swallows Ben Solo whole. I mean, you, mm. we've said it again and again and again and again. <laughs> Luke yeah. looked upon um, Kylo Ren and said that Kylo Ren was just a shell. He was just that one persona who swallowed um, Ben Solo whole. Uh, and it's just, it's very sad that both of these young men um, had such such fate. What I What I loved about Lelouch's character, especially um, near the end of the series, it only went to uh, two seasons into the last episode, episode 25. It's straight up 
god king emperor energy like huge supreme leader energy where he uh the gas has completely taken over and he uses that to enslave everyone like mind control everyone to bow down to him and he rules the whole entire world but there's a twist at the end of all this where Lelouch and his best friend Suzaku they make a plan to for Suzaku to dress up as Zero because everyone looks on on to Zero who was Lelouch's alter ego masked black in the cape as this hero almost like a, a superhero so Lelouch wants Suzaku to dress up as Zero and kill him. And we don't know of this plan really until you see Zero show up at this huge, uh, you know, military-esque style bombastic parade that Lelouch is holding. You, you find out that Lelouch and Suzaku planned to, for... Suzaku as Zero to murder Lelouch to save humanity and but this whole sequence is just actually really gorgeous to watch it's yeah. actually one of my favorite sequences it's called the Zero Requiem yeah and what he says uh, to uh, Suzaku is basically I'm going to be the bearer of all the evil yeah. in the world like when people uh, see hate, they're going to see me because I'm the one that's controlling everyone and making them be a slave to myself and my wishes. And so I'm going to put all of the world's hate on me. And then you as zero, you're going to slay me in front of everyone. It's like you, you find out that what, what you think is Lelouch coming to this utter selfish domineering point he knew because of his power because of the gas like and his relationship with c2 and seeing all that he's seen you 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 just come to find out like he knew he had to get to this point in order to die to save everyone oh it's his christ moment he literally like moment yeah. Not yeah. calling not calling Lelouch Christ, okay? <laughs> no, it's it's Christ's archetype. He laid all of the world's sins just like Christ did and had the hero slay him mm-hmm. and slay the evil. And he slides down. Oh, and it's a cross of blood. It's it's, it's insanely symbolic. Yeah. Yeah. To his, the his feet. arms are out in this cross, the, the <laughs> sliding down. I'm just like God, the symbolism. <laughs> it's like, hello, hello, Christ figure. Yeah. And at the feet of this like cross is is Nunnally, all in bond, you know, Nunnally, chains yeah. and everything. And that's his sister who he was trying to transform the world for and make it a kinder place. And Nunnally realizes what her, her, her brother did. Ultimately, whether we like it or not, it's ultimately what Solo did. Like he, um, he died to save the one he loved, just oh. like Luch died to save Nunley, to give her, to destroy the world, to recreate it a better place for her. I think it's interesting that um, a movie sequel came out once the series was finished, and ten years later. Code Geass Resurrection <laughs> oh. came out in theaters. Lelouch was no longer mortal. He was granted immortality. And uh, he married uh, C2 in this. Oh, the, the Ray figure. So the Ben Stiles yes. character and the Ray character married each other. That's very interesting. Cool. So, you know. You never know. You never know. Maybe in 10 years, we'll have a Ben Solo resurrection. You know? I can't wait 10 years. (laughs) I can't either. 10 years is too long. I'm I'm getting so old. I need to doubt my youth. (laughs) 10 
10 minutes. Hello, this is Emrys, and with Luthien, thank you so much for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel and click on that little bell icon that will give you notifications every time we post a new one. And of course, like, comment, and do all those things. <laughs> Peace, love, and Raylo, guys. All magic comes with a price.